Hello there, everybody. It's Sally here. And welcome back to another Tuesday Teaching Tips. Now, this one actually came out of something I was doing last week and I was working with some teachers and I was saying, this is what I've, this is what I've been doing for the last few years to help me uh, remember how to approach teaching a piece. Um, and what what it started from was i um i got fed up of looking at a piece of music as a blank as a blank page and thinking oh what did i do when i taught this last time so actually what i've started to do is two things i've started to use these post-it notes and i kind of scribble post-it notes whenever i'm thinking about how to teach a piece i use a post-it note and i write down all my different ideas and i stick the post-it note on that particular page here's another one i've just done uh, about flashcards and here's a, here's another one so i've always got a starting point doesn't mean to say that, that I, that's exactly what i do because i actually add to those quite a lot and um this this came out of what i was saying last week about forest Kinney, if you remember, let me just find him. He's back here somewhere. I should have got him ready, really, shouldn't I? I haven't played but one. Here we go. So I think, as I said last week, I was lucky enough to meet Forrest, and um, I had this book at the meeting that I went to with him. And what I did is I wrote down all his ideas like this. So I can actually quote something that Forrest said directly on here with, with all those ideas. And every time I come to that, I don't have to try and think oh, what did we do and how did we do this because I've got it here you know play any pairs of black keys it says here and they're just really really simple but it just just makes it oh yeah that's what I did last time or, what could I do this time and if I find a good idea that works then I actually add to it like that and I will I've started to do this as well when I go to uh, presentations on pieces or people are talking about books or webinars where people are talking about um, new music or whatever. I always make sure I have some flash um, flash notes because I've just been working with flash notes. Like I always make sure I always have some post it notes. I always have a pencil to hand um, and I either write on the post it notes or I write directly onto the music. Because this is music for me, and this is music I'm going to keep, and this is music I'm probably going to use again. Um, I always, these days, have a copy, my own copy, of the, any music that a student is learning. Yes, it does add to the cost, but um, how can I teach a piece of music if I don't actually have a copy of it and can think through all the different areas that need to be explored, that the pupil needs to learn, or even think about how am I going to introduce this to the pupil. So I suppose the first thing is have your own piece of music. And the second thing probably is to get those post-it notes and those pencils and really, really um, get writing on those. So I can see there's lots of people um, watching. So do do drop me a note and let me know who you are and, and, uh, and any thoughts you've got about what you do that's similar. Um, so, for example, I'm just going to talk here for a moment about the minuet in C, and this is from the current grade one syllabus ABRSM. And of course, it starts with with a, a, a nice uh, fanfare type um, opening, which needs to have lots of energy and be very decisive, and uh, with very crisp chords. And you know, it starts with a a, a lovely rhythm. Um, I'm just going to show you, I might use some rhythm flashcards and we have been, yeah, these, these are the ones I'm going to use, um, we've been busy just creating lots and lots of rhythm flashcards like this um, and those are available over in the community this, this month. Um, so we might start with doing some rhythms like this. Actually, this was the group I was going to use. Oh, nothing like being live to actually make you forget what you've just done. So I might... I've written down here, show show the pupil the four flashcards. And actually what I might want them to do is clap through those flashcards, um, either you, probably at this point using metrical counting. So they'd be going one, two, three, one, and two, three, one, two, and three, and one, two, three. Yeah. And then I might play the first section to them and it has very much a repeated rhythm. And I might ask them to say which one of these rhythm cards they can hear. So I'm engaging their listening before they even go close to the notes. And I've got that written down, as I say. 
and we've got some comments coming in so charlotte is saying uh Okay, she's saying she uses highlighters to draw attention to various aspects of the piece of music. Yeah, I think, I don't know whether you're talking about with your pupils, you might use the highlighters all for yourself. I think both are perfectly valid, really. Um, and Anastasia, yes, you've managed to catch me live. Well done, Anastasia. I think I'm a little bit earlier than I normally am, but I've just been having a, a fascinating conversation with, with a colleague also about rhythm. So, and Chris is there as well. Welcome, everybody. So my Tuesday teaching tip for today, just to summarise, is to make sure you have a piece of music, whatever pieces of music that your students are learning, have your own copy and write on it. Write the anything you like in, in pencil that's going to help you teach it in a more uh, um, in, in a more direct way and uh, write also on post-it notes any teaching ideas, creative ideas that you come up with about how you can teach that. Yeah, because it just does brain work when you have, have six people that you're going to teach it to. Anyhow, that's just one little idea. And I hope you join me next week for another Tuesday teaching tip. OK, bye for now.